And the small thing you take our water treatment plant or water reservoir, all that will be done in an industry. So we have done that here. The cricket field, the pavilion. We are giving both sports and education. We give an all-round development, which is appreciated by all. SVC's uh, placements are still uh, shining. Out of the 620-odd eligible students of 2018-2019 batch, more than 90% of them have been placed, and 25% of those students have got dual offers as well. They've uh, established certain very nice moral values in the students, uh, which I think is one of the reasons why SVC stands out as an institution and should be the choice that parents consider today. My overall profile has been shaped with the help of my faculty members, um, you know, utilizing which um, I've built over 10 projects in robotics and Internet of Things domains and I have won in five regional and national level competitions which wouldn't have been possible without their continuous support. When the parents come to SVC, we take them around the institution, they see the infrastructure, they get mighty pleased. As a student also, they like the whole setup. Once they go and see the institution, then they come back and tell us we're very happy to join SVC. SVC gave me the space to uh, discover and push myself harder. So if there was one phrase that I was looking for, I think it's uh, strive and uh, you know achieve your goal. Um, set really high standards. I have meetings with the alumni and I feel proud that they are very bright and they are all doing very well in their own fields. If I were to describe SVC in one word, it would be to empower. Uh, the reason is because we students have been given full access to infrastructure, um, the research facilities and the faculty's brain power so that we can utilize it to develop you know, cutting edge technology and graduate as top class engineers. Getting into the college was itself a matter of prestige. So I think um, it was a very simple decision for me and I was very proud that I got into SBC. We have now uh, 10 uh, undergraduate degree programs, 10 postgraduate programs and 10 of our departments are recognized as research centers by an university to which we are affiliated to. SVC's consistent ranking uh, as one of the top engineering institutions for the past three decades also supplemented my decision to join here. Now our intake is more than 1,000 students per year and we have a total of 4,500 students studying here. When I see today where some of SVCNs are placed in society, I'm really proud to say that I'm also from the same institution and I think you know, being a part of the Alumni Association has really given me that reach to be able to network with a lot more people. Be it the freshmen or the seniors who you collaborate with um, and you know, uh, present projects, papers and attend competitions, this one-of-a-kind atmosphere is very hard to find in other engineering colleges. That is something which makes SVCE very unique. We have very eminent uh, teachers, highly qualified and uh, also the students, we give them an all-round uh, training apart from just academics, we, we sort of give them a good rounding and it's a niche college, I want to keep it like that. Also there are other certification courses that SPCE has brought out um, in managerial economics, financial statement analysis, which are supplementary skill sets that each engineer should learn uh, to join the workforce. 
as an engineer i think um, svc taught me how to be a logic driven person to think analytically through all the problems and i think that's a skill that i've been able to apply anywhere in my life we also have established various centers of excellence such as the center of excellence in uh, electric and hybrid vehicles a center of excellence in uh, computer aided manufacturing also have a department of science and technology sponsored lab which is in the area of nanotechnology research and even a small thing you take our water treatment plant or water reservoir all that will be done in an industry so we have done that here cricket field the pavilion we are giving both sports and education we give an all round development which is appreciated by all svc's uh, placements are still are uh, shining out of the 620 odd eligible students of 2018 2019 batch more than 90% of them have been placed and 25% of those students have got dual offers as well they've uh, established certain very nice moral values in the students uh, which i think is one of the reasons why svc stands out as an institution and should be the choice that parents consider today my overall profile has been shaped with the help of my faculty members um, you know utilizing which um, i have built over 10 projects in robotics and internet of things domains and i have won in five regional and national level competitions which wouldn't have been possible without their continuous support when the parents come to svc we take them round the institution they see the infrastructure they get mighty pleased as a student also they like the whole setup once they go and see the institution then they come back and tell us we are very happy to join svc svc gave me the space to uh, discover and push myself harder so if there was one phrase that i was looking for i think it's uh, strive and uh, you know achieve your goal um, set really high standards i have meetings with the alumni and i feel proud that they are very bright and they are all doing very well in their own fields if i were to describe svc in one word it would be to empower and the reason is because we students have been given full access to infrastructure um, the research facilities and the faculty's brain power so that we can utilize it to develop you know cutting edge technology and graduate as top class engineers getting into the college was itself a matter of prestige so i think um, it was a very simple decision for me and i was very proud that i got into svc we have now uh, 10 uh, undergraduate degree programs 10 postgraduate programs and 10 of our departments are recognized as research centers by an i university to which we are affiliated to SVC is consistent ranking uh, as one of the top engineering institutions for the past 3 decades also supplemented my decision to join here now our intake is more than 1000 uh, students per year and we have a total of 4500 students studying here when i see today where some of svcians are placed in society i am really proud to say that i am also from the same institution and i think 
you know being a part of the alumni association has really given me that reach to be able to network with a lot more people be it the freshmen or the seniors who you collaborate with um, and you know uh, present projects papers and attend competitions this one of a kind atmosphere is very hard to find in other engineering colleges that is something which makes svc very unique we have very eminent uh, teachers highly qualified and uh, also the students we give them a all round uh, training apart from just academics we we sort of give them a good rounding and it's a niche college i want to keep it like that also there are other certification courses that spc has brought out um in managerial economics financial statement analysis which are supplementary skill sets that each engineer should learn uh, to join the workforce as an engineer i think um spc taught me how to be a logic driven person to think analytically through all the problems and i think that's a skill that i've been able to apply anywhere in my life we also have established various centers of excellence such as the center of excellence in uh, electric and hybrid vehicles a center of excellence in uh, computer aided manufacturing also have a department of science and technology sponsored lab which is in the area of nanotechnology research and even as a small thing you take our water treatment plant or water reservoir all that will be done in an industry so we have done that here cricket field the pavilion we are giving both sports and education we give an all round development which is appreciated by all svc's uh, placements are still are uh, shining out of the 620 odd eligible students of 2018 2019 batch more than 90% of them have been placed and 25% of those students have got dual offers as well they've uh, established certain very nice moral values in the students uh, which i think is one of the reasons why svc stands out as an institution and should be the choice that parents consider today my overall profile has been shaped with the help of my faculty members um, you know utilizing which um, i have built over 10 projects in robotics and internet of things domains and i have won in five regional and national level competitions which wouldn't have been possible without their continuous support when the parents come to svc we take them round the institution they see the infrastructure they get mighty pleased as a student also they like the whole setup once they go and see the institution then they come back and tell us we are very happy to join svc svc gave me the space to uh, discover and push myself harder so if there was one phrase that i was looking for i think it's uh, strive and uh, you know achieve your goal um, set really high standards i have meetings with the alumni and i feel proud that they are very bright and they are all doing very well in their own fields if i were to describe svc in one word it would be to empower and the reason is because we students have been given full access to infrastructure um, the research facilities and the faculty's brain power so that we can utilize it to develop you know cutting edge technology and graduate as top class engineers getting into the college was itself a matter of prestige so i think um, it was a very simple decision for me and i was very proud that i got into svc 
We have now uh, 10 uh, undergraduate degree programs, 10 postgraduate programs, and 10 of our departments are recognized as research centers by an university to which we are affiliated to. SVC is consistent ranking uh, as one of the top engineering institutions for the past three decades also supplemented my decision to join here. Now our intake is more than 1,000 students per year and we have a total of 4,500 students studying here. When I see today where some of SVCNs are placed in society, I'm really proud to say that I'm also from the same institution and I think you know, being a part of the Alumni Association has really given me that reach to be able to network with a lot more people. Be it the freshmen or the seniors who you collaborate with um, and you know uh, present projects, papers and attend competitions, this one of a kind atmosphere is very hard to find in other engineering colleges. That is something which makes SVCE very unique. We have very eminent uh, teachers, highly qualified and uh, also the students, we give them an all-round uh, training apart from just academics, we, we sort of give them a good rounding and it's a niche college, I want to keep it like that. Also there are other certification courses that SPCE has brought out um, in managerial economics, financial statement analysis, which are supplementary skill sets that each engineer should learn uh, to join the workforce. As an engineer, I think um, SVC taught me how to be a logic-driven person to think analytically through all the problems. And I think that's a skill that I've been able to apply anywhere in my life. We also have established various centers of excellence, such as the Center of Excellence in uh, Electric and Hybrid Vehicles. A Center of Excellence in uh, Computer-Aided Manufacturing. We also have a Department of Science and Technology sponsored lab which is in the area of nanotechnology research. And even as a small thing you take our water treatment plant or water reservoir, all that will be done in an industry. So we have done that here. Cricket field, the pavilion, we are giving both sports and education. We give an all-round development, which is appreciated by all. SVC's uh, placements are still are uh, shining. Out of the 620 odd eligible students of 2018-2019 batch, more than 90% of them have been placed and 25% of those students have got dual offers as well. They've uh, established certain very nice moral values in the students, uh, which I think is one of the reasons why SVC stands out as an institution and should be the choice that parents consider today. My overall profile has been shaped with the help of my faculty members, um, you know, utilizing which um, I've built over 10 projects in robotics and Internet of Things domains and I have won in five regional and national level competitions which wouldn't have been possible without their continuous support. When the parents come to SVC, we take them around the institution, they see the infrastructure, they get mighty pleased. As a student also, they like the whole setup. Once they go and see the institution, then they come back and tell us we're very happy to join SVC. SVC gave me the space to uh, discover and push myself harder. So if there was one phrase that I was looking for, I think it's uh, strive and um, you know achieve your goal. Um, set really high standards. I have meetings with the alumni and I feel proud that they're very bright and they're all doing very well in their own fields. If I were to describe SVCE in one word, it would be to empower. 
Uh, the reason is because we students have been given full access to infrastructure, um, the research facilities and the faculty's brain power so that we can utilize it to develop you know, cutting edge technology and graduate as top class engineers. Getting into the college was itself a matter of prestige. So I think um, it was a very simple decision for me and I was very proud that I got into SBC. We have now uh, 10 uh, undergraduate degree programs, 10 postgraduate programs and 10 of our departments are recognized as research centers by an university to which we are affiliated to. SPC is consistent ranking uh, as one of the top engineering institutions for the past three decades also supplemented my decision to join here. Now our intake is more than 1000 students per year and we have a total of 4500 students studying here. When I see today where some of SPCNs are placed in society, I am really proud to say that I am also from the same institution and I think you know, being a part of the Alumni Association has really given me that reach to be able to network with a lot more people. Be it the freshmen or the seniors who you collaborate with um, and you know uh, present projects, papers and attend competitions, this one of a kind atmosphere is very hard to find. Five only. Oh, yes, sir. Sir, on the photo, video on for me. Good afternoon, Ramay. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Welcome, sir. Professor, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, good evening, sir. Ramay, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Good evening, good evening, sir. Good evening, Kumar Sami. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, sir, photo editing, Lama. Sir, sir, presentation, Aram Chiduang, eh? Are the couple of mother, photo per number? Okay, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you permitting the people who are in the waiting room, sir? Yes. There is no waiting room, sir. Whenever they are coming, I am permitting, sir. There is no waiting room. Okay, then. Fine. So, please follow them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mostly people come in YouTube, sir. YouTube. Okay, okay. YouTube player 24 hours, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At, uh, almost at 5 o'clock, it will reach maximum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Sir, as we planned, uh, uh, we will request Dr. Uh, Ramakrishnan sir to uh, share his slide, and followed by we will take a snapshot. Uh, Dr. Dinagran, you can share your uh, slide by the time uh, you know all yes, of sir, us will uh, on our video, and uh, yeah. I mean our coordinators, and uh, we can. Uh, Take a snapshot of this thing for some yes, record sir. purpose. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will launch my presentation. Yes, sir, I have launched my presentation, sir. Yes, it is uh, visible for yeah, us too. Yeah, it's visible. Yes, no, yeah, that's good. Thanks. HOD, sir, share Adela, sir. Ah, yes, sir. That's yes, sir. Uh, clearly see. Oh, that's good. Dr. CSK, sir. Dr. CSK, hello. I think there's some uh, mic problem, uh, sir, for him. Hello, Dr. CSK. Am I audible for you, Dr. CSK? Hello, Mr. Kumar Swami, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think for others it is fine. He typed yes, me some problem with his hand, it seems, for him. Yes, sir. He said he is not able to receive our uh, audio. He has left the meeting also. Shall I start, sir? Uh, I will uh, request HOD, sir. Shall we start, sir, then? Yeah, no issues. You can start, sir. How will start the time? You can start. Yes, sir. And now I am audible, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you can. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Ananda. I request the all participants to mute your audio and video. I invite Dr. R. Ramesh, professor and coordinator of this webinar, to welcome the gathering. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sandamarai. Uh, good evening to everyone, respected head of the department and convener of this event, Dr. Ramesh Babu, sir. Speakers of today's section, Dr. Dinagran Sambar, project leader, research and development, Tata Steels, Swansea, United Kingdom. Senior professors, faculty members from our college and department, and dear participants, from various other institutions, industries, and research organizations. I'm very happy to welcome you all for this international webinar on hydrogen embrittlement degradation of engineering metals, organized by Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Sri Barambudur. The webinar session is aimed at exploring the challenging attributes in failure analysis in design of uh, many engineering metals for meeting out the real-time engineering application. We hope the program will be very much useful for the faculty members, researchers, industry practitioners, students, 
and will give you a platform for knowledge sharing and future challenges involved. We have around 490 participants registered for this webinar and I am probably would like to say that many participants registered from the other states of India and even some from other countries like Indonesia, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Oman and uh, Turkey. On behalf of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, SVC, I once again welcome you all for this uh, international webinar session. Thank you, sir. Now I would invite Dr. S. Ramesh Babu, Head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering and convener of this webinar to give his presidential address. Welcome, sir. Uh, Thank you. Uh, respected uh, expert member, Dr. Janagaran Sambar, project leader, fracture and cutting metallurgist, research and development, Tata Spring, Swansea, United Kingdom. Respected coordinators, Dr. R. Ramesh, Dr. C. Sandamari Kandan, Mr. G. Dirbagaran, Mr. J. Sivaram Pandian, faculty members from Mechanical Engineering Department of STCE, faculty members from other departments of Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering, faculty members from other institutions, research scholars, student participants, participants from industries, warm welcome and good evening. And it's good to hear from our coordinator, Dr. Ramesh, that the participants even are even from other countries. It shows the importance of the topic that is the hydrogen embattlement degradation of engineering materials. Now, with the uh, kind permission of the coordinator, I want to share my screen with respect to the small presentation of our department regarding the facilities because there are might be a student from other uh, colleges who might be want to know about our department and the facilities available so that we can they can come forward to do some collaborative work there that might be a faculty members and other department or other colleges and all who can come forward to do collaborative uh, collaborative work with the, the department so uh, expert number uh, can i uh, i want to share my screen yeah okay i will just thank thank you sir Like I said, you can also mute presently. Yeah, end of it. So thanks to the coordinators for organizing uh, this uh, uh, webinar on hydrogen embedment and also thanks to the speaker for spending his valuable time in gathering his experience and also his knowledge to the uh, participants. So coming to the uh, department, under the shadow of mechanical engineering department, we have one UG program and two PG program. B mechanical engineering is a PG program being offered by mechanical engineering department. And it was established in the year 1985. And this B mechanical engineering program is accredited since 1998. And those who are in the academic institution, uh, they might be knowing the accreditation, uh, that is the importance of accreditation. And very recently, uh, it has come to the uh, it has come to the practice of such a way that uh, those who want to pursue their uh, masters from abroad, or they want to pursue their uh, what is that um, the job in the abroad and all. Okay, the companies ensure that whether the degree is uh, accredited by National Board of Accreditation, and our intake is 120, and our curriculum focuses toward automation and additive manufacturing. Coming to the PG courses, we offer two courses. One is MA in Mechatronics and MA in Industrial Automation and Robotics. This MA in Mechatronics was established in the year 2013 and recognizing the need of the today's industrial scenario, okay, we started the new PG program that is MA in Industrial Automation and Robotics. And we see the curriculum that focus towards the local automation and in the case of MA Industrial Automation, we focus towards Industry 4.0. And since our uh, degree, that is a bachelor's degree, is NB accredited, our B degree is globally accepted. And this department is recognized as a research center by Anna University because of our uh, faculty strength. One unique feature is that we follow choice-based credit system for in our curriculum. It means that 
the uh, student apart from the professional course what, what they can do depending upon the requirement they can select some online courses they can select some for department courses from other subjects okay depending upon the need okay this is the practice which we have incorporated in the new curriculum as i told the main uh, strength is a faculty strength if you see this nearly 61% of the total strength uh, have the total strength of faculty or doctorate and the 32 or pursuing the doctorate in another two or three years nearly 93% will become uh, will be a doctor in a department and only two more faculty that is 7% of the total strength or get to start the career in the, the pursue the uh, doctorates and what is the uniqueness okay that might be some uh, aspiring candidates okay that is who are who will be about to complete the bachelor's degree uh, right now and uh, that is uh, considered the present uh, scenario there that they might be uh, having the willingness to join for a uh, pg so what is the uniqueness of pursuing pg at svc okay it's a 35 years old department and as i already told you that it's to the faculty or the doctorates uh and our department is uh, recognized as a research center by anna university the curriculum for me mechatronics and me industrial automation uh, or industrial automation robotics are completely designed by the industrial experts on leading academicians and we have mechatronics automation modeling and simulation artificial intelligence embedded plc laboratories which are essential for the today's uh, rec industry requirement and if you see the syllabus for me industrial automation it focuses towards industry 4.0 curriculum and we have a management scholarship for tuition fee and books which normally which will not be uh, given by many of the colleges for pg students okay here uh, even for a pg we give management scholarship for tuition fee on books and uh, we have a aict uh, scholarship uh, at a rate of 12400 per month for a valid gate score another important thing is that uh, we also have a intramural pg medical scholarship at the rate of uh, rupees 5000 per month for 20 months okay, based on certain criteria okay that is six uh, six students in out of the uh, 18 students will be uh, will be eligible for availing this scholarship and we also have intramural pg research grant to carry out innovative research projects in the fourth semester we do sponsor our students to attend the conferences in india and abroad so these are the unique pictures uh, which are available for pursuing uh, at the post graduate degree at spc to inculcate the leadership quality and also to uh, have a very good professional development among the students we have society of mechanical engineers the quality management center industry uh, indian institute of welding so under the various professional activity uh, society we do organize various activities and also uh, conduct various program with the student participate and also bring laurels to work department the photo participates okay some of the activities we carried out by the students okay by taking part in the baja competition by taking part in the aero modeling competition and also regularly we do uh, conduct uh, the program related to the green build and six uh, six sigma training under the quality management center Coming to the infrastructure, I shown only the basic infrastructure. Uh, if you see our infrastructure, uh, it, you might have the students might have a real feeling of being in a small industry, and also our uh, equipments are normally uh, we never uh, procure uh, what is that term, uh, training sort of models and all. Okay, we go for only the industrial type of machine tools and all. We have a real boiler. Uh, we have a vertical machining sensor, CNC turning sensor, coordinate measuring mission, uh, and also we develop our own friction stud welding mission. Uh, we have a laser engraving. We have a coal metal transfer right now, which can be used for wire art additive manufacturing process. And also we have purchased one camera with a high resolution camera, which can take a photograph inside an engine, what is happening inside, it, so that depending upon the uh, injection pressure. So what? How will be the emission characteristics? So these are and also we have a pin on disc. So these are all the uh, very few facilities which I have shown. Apart from that, we do have our very good testing facilities also. And coming to the placement particular uh, details and all, okay, how we are able to consistently place our students. Uh, that is a uh, eligible student. Okay, that is our uh, meaning. Uh, we meet a target of ninety percent. and for our department the mechanical engineering department we have a placement in software and also the core based companies one advantage for the student is that 
if they have been selected in a software based company they also can take a job in core company also that is the main feature where any college never all all this kind of uh, that is a real opportunity here you know, in mechanical department if the person got selected in a core that or software based company he can also sit for a core uh, companies and earn many students have a deal offers also so this is about the small presentation about our department uh, any student want to have more detail about our department and the institution they do can visit our college and also our department web page and coming to the today topic that is hydrogen embrittlement degradation of engineering metals it's really a wonderful topic and those who want to pursue research okay in this topic i, I think this uh, topic will be very very well useful for, for us and uh, so far I, uh, i i came to know about the corrosion degradation or oxidation degradation okay so out of curiosity i have gone through i googled okay what is my hydrogen embrittlement and all there's nothing but the absorption of uh, hydrogen i'm not going to talk because our expert is there and he will be sharing more his experience and all and i came to know that it's very it's a very very worst condition compared to oxidation and uh, what is that the other um, pro uh, other degrading uh, properties and all i hope the today's uh, session will be very much interesting and uh, uh, dear participants okay those are about to pursue the research i think this topic will be useful for you with this small presentation or this small note i once again uh, say thanks to our uh, uh, thank and also welcome our uh, uh, speaker dr dinagran sambar and also wish a good luck for all the participants thank you thank you sir i am audible sir yes 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 sir audible sir dear Ready. participant please uh, mute your video uh, some of you uh, showing your video please mute your video satish babu sir mute your video now i request Uh, Sivaram Pandian, Assistant Professor, Mechanical Engineering, and one of the coordinators, to introduce our in international guest speaker of this session. Welcome, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Sanjay Magran, sir. Uh, good evening to all of you. I am very happy to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Tinagaran Sambath. Dr. Tinagaran Sambath is currently working as a project leader. fracture and fetic metallurgist research and development tata steels swansea united kingdom he is involved in the many real time research projects related to development of infrastructure and engineering steel products for high value markets as a researcher he is also on affiliate in swansea university united kingdom and conducts different collaborative research activities with steel and metal institute a division of fancy university united kingdom he did his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from institute of road and transport technology e road he received his masters and phd degree in machine design from indian institute of technology metras chennai he did his post doctoral research at the university of manchester united kingdom in the year 2015 The post doctorate was on hydrogen embrittlement of nickel alloys funded by the BP International Center for Advanced Materials. He has published over 21 research articles in peer reviewed journals. He has served as a reviewer for a handful of reputed international journals. His research interests include fracture and fetic, corrosion fetic, crack growth behavior. processing structure property relations material characterizations using sophisticated analytical instruments high resolution digital image correlation and quantitative failure analysis methods using scanning electron microscopy and x-ray computer topography i once again feel happy to have introduced dr tinagaran sambath today's uh, eminent speaker Uh, i hand over the session and invite you sir to deliver the talk thank you sir thank you yes. suraman podian yes. sir yes yes sir um, it's uh, it's a great uh, pleasure to join this uh, webinar uh, thanks for the introduction um, i will try to launch my presentation
so uh, um, everyone can see the slide yeah. now are you yeah yes 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 sir we are receiving. okay okay that's good okay um yeah thank you very much uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to be uh, in, in here in this forum uh, with you all um, yeah thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this uh, talk yeah okay so uh, i'm going to give uh, a bit of a background uh, about where i work um, so as uh, yeah, uh, mr uh, sivarama pandian uh, introduced me uh, yeah i i work in uh, one of the r d uh, centers of uh, tata steel europe uh, they have got uh, three r d centers um, across uh, europe and the uh, uk um, so I belong to uh, Swansea uh, Center. So here uh, we do all of the uh, fracture and uh, fatigue experiments, including um, environment-assisted cracking. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, they have got access to um, uh, several um, aggressive uh, gases uh, to simulate um, uh, blast furnace. So that's the uh, blast furnace is the um, uh, uh, structure that we use to produce steel. So yeah, to simulate certain things uh, of blast furnace and also uh, for uh, product performance evaluation. So it's uh, yeah, it's, so we collaborate with um, uh, Steel and uh, Metals Institute of uh, the Swansea University. So we we also based within the university. So we can readily, um, um, you know, we can have a, an effective collaboration with the professors and um, and also uh, students. So yeah, and uh, and one highlight I wanted to say, you know, which I heard in the recent news. So uh, Tata Steel uh, Europe makes um, a premium product. It's a structural uh, tube steel called uh, Celsius. It's our uh, premium brand. So uh, the news is um, uh, the, new, the, uh, the 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 um, uh, famous um, uh, Barcelona football stadium in Spain that they are going to renovate using that uh, um, high quality, high strength uh, tubes. So with that note, I'm going to begin my uh, uh, presentation. So my talk is on hydrogen embrittlement degradation of uh, engineering metals. So yeah, there is no better time than now to um, pursue this uh, research on um, materials for um, uh, hydrogen. Why? Because there are two driving forces. One is um, several of the industries, um, uh, you know, in, in a couple of minutes, we're going to see that uh, industries. So they, um, uh, yeah, they, 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 they experience um, hydrogen related uh, failures um, in, in wide range of materials. Uh, in particular, uh, if you look at um, um, oil and gas, they use uh, um, uh, exotic uh, materials like nickel alloys in uh, in in uh, oil oil and gas production uh, systems. So what happens is when the oil price was good, they were able to if if there is any failure in the oil well, they can just abandon and go and drill very next to the uh, uh, the, the the failed well, and then uh, you know they they don't mind about uh, losing the uh, uh, the the well, but now it, it has become the oil, the oil as you know oil prices are come you know become highly competitive so they are going for they they're trying to um, uh, reduce their operational cost they are trying to reduce their failures and extend the life so that is where you know that the drying force comes for finding fine tuning these materials uh, for hydrogen services and also, secondly, um, these days, you know, zero emission is the new new normal. Um, so, we are, you know, several countries have different targets. So, um, uh, yeah, hydrogen uh, fueled vehicles are very important. Um, but, 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 yeah, to make it affordable, so that you know, so that the transition is quick. So that is where um, uh, uh, you know the alternative materials for um, uh, hydrogen uh, storage tanks is also you know uh, emerging um, research area. So in my today's talk, I'm going to uh, divide this talk into two parts. Uh, one is um, I'm going to give a overview of um, 
uh, hydrogen embrittlement. So looking at failures and failures factors affecting hydrogen embrittlement mechanism testing and then um, also we'll talking about talk about mitigation strategies and then i'm, I'm also going to uh, uh, you know touch upon some challenges uh, we have and secondly i'm going to present uh, 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 a result um, which uh, which i have done uh, when i was there in um, university of manchester so that's uh, you know one interesting area uh, where you know we could uh, uh, you know I have developed um, um, quantitative fractography along with my uh, colleagues uh, in the university. So I will uh, go through that uh, results as well. So what is hydrogen embrittlement? Um, yeah. So that's a very uh, sorry, sorry uh, to disturb you, sir. Uh, sorry to disturb you. Uh, screen yeah. is not visible, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, it's coming, no, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. I think it, I think it I... dropped. I think. Okay. Okay. Oh. Can you re-share it, sir? Yes, sir. I'm. Uh, I'm going to share it now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So is is my screen up again? Yes. yes sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, it has come. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. So, what is hydrogen embrittlement? Um, uh, it's it's a sudden uh, fracture of um, metals and alloys uh, due to the presence of hydrogen in the metal lattice. So, what is uh, what I mean by lattice? Uh, it's uh, it's it's the uh, crystal structure, uh, the, the 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 atoms arrangement. So that is, uh, you know, we have a lot of gaps in the uh, lattice. Uh, uh, as you know, hydrogen is the smallest atom, so which can just uh, pass through all these gaps. So that is how it diffuses through the uh, lattice. So it goes to, uh, it stays in the matrix. That is the main um, uh, uh, metallic element in the alloy or interfaces uh, between any interface in the microstructure or precipitates. And um, um, and also defects uh, like point defect line and all you know all forms of defects. So what happens is sudden fracture occurs under both sustained and um, fatigue loading. What I mean by sustained is uh, constant load or monotonic loading, and then fatigue load is uh, cyclic loading. So what what happens to the material is we we can see that it uh, macroscopically it shows brittle fracture brittle fracture features um which uh, which the the material normally behave like a ductile material so that's uh, that's the problem so you know we don't uh, see any hint before it uh, fractures so yeah so many it's an interdisciplinary effort made by uh, several groups you know it, it, you know several communities uh, mechanical metallurgical electrochemical and corrosion so all these uh, you know, communities work together to better understand and produce better uh, um, material so infrastructures that face hydrogen related failures are uh, offshore so you can see this uh, massive structure you know they are in marine environment and they you know one way or the other hydrogen enters into the metal of course they have protective coating and several of the stuff but oh, you know as aging structure um you know just you know one weak link is sufficient enough um, and also there are several scenarios under which hydrogen enters into the uh, these structures and for example in chemical processing uh, they handle very aggressive um, uh, fluids so they also you know uh, you know choose uh, exotic materials to uh, to 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 um, avoid failures and also extend the uh, uh, operating of operation of their uh, assets and here i'm i'm sure i'm going to dwell some some time on this you know this is um, called well head which is actually the structure that sits on the mouth of the well uh, basically, you know, you can see that it's a large structure. You can, you know, in comparison to the people around them, uh, it is holding the entire uh, tube string, which is down, you know, running down into the oil well. Which is, you know, it's going to be very 
heavy um, and also you know under production it you know the the, the fluids will come out of uh, the well at high pressure and temperature uh, so this section will experience very high uh, stress as well as very aggressive environment um, so basically they need to use uh, um, uh, you know, materials uh, uh, materials or alloys called uh, uh, corrosion resistant alloy so that those are the ones which can sustain this kind of uh, demanding environment and you can see this uh, long distance pipelines they are all they are also ex uh, um, uh, you know exposed to hydrogen environment um, other infrastructures, uh, um, such as uh, nuclear power plants, for example, they they have they also ex you know, have several of these um, um, failure mechanisms. One particular thing, one example is um, hydrate cracking, which is also because of uh, hydrogen, um, uh, you know, getting into the um, um, metal. So what happens is in nuclear fuel rods, they use zirconium alloy. Um, when uh, that's a um, hexagonal close packed uh, crystal so th that that alloy forms um, hydrides with uh, hydrogen so that is a brittle phase and it starts to crack and it is very very dangerous you know we don't want um, so people work on zirconium alloy to to prevent um, any any failure um, yeah and as I told about hydrogen fueled vehicles, um, yeah, they are actually you know emerging research area. Um, yeah, so they are looking for alternatives for uh, uh, stainless steel, which is at the moment uh, you know um, resistant uh, resistant enough to uh, postpone fracture. So, what are the um, uh, hydrogen damage um, uh, we see? More broadly, there are there are about three types. So hydrogen blistering, which is which occurs in low strength alloys, that means you know having low yield strength. Um, uh, so in the presence of high hydrogen concentration, um, so they they, they enter. You know, so these are present in an electrolyte. So basically, the hydrogen is generated uh, through electrochemical process, and the hydrogen um, you know it, it, it splits into single H that is called uh, nascent hydrogen or atomic hydrogen. So that's the one in the form of, uh, they call, also call this adsorbed hydrogen. So that enters into the metal. So it will not enter as H2, it will only enter as H. And it, it diffuses through the um, matrix. And whenever it, it hits some of the interfaces or voids, it goes there, accumulates hydrogen there, and then um, due to thermodynamics, um, they, they they recombine and form hydrogen gas. So what happens is these are very low strength alloys. Um, they, they the hydrogen accumulates and it creates a huge pressure, which which exceeds the yield strength of the material. And at at that point, it it, it leads to you know bulging or blistering. So blistering later on will uh, will uh, become a crack or some uh, crack and then become a catastrophic failure. And um, today's topic, hydrogen embrittlement, which happens in uh, high strength alloys at low concentration. So in this one, um, we need external stress to have this failure to happen. And we are going to do, see that in detail. In case of hydrogen embrittlement, um, hydrogen blistering, we don't need any external stress to effect this failure. And in hydrate cracking, as I told in zirconium alloy, here we are seeing a face map. Face map, it will show, you know, for example, uh, this, this uh, material has got uh, zirconium hydride oxide, zirconium oxide and uh, pure zirconium. So the blue are all zirconium and uh, red color all zirconium hydroxide. So the red color, um, uh, region are very brittle compared to other um, in the, in the blue color and the green one is the our oxide which is at the outer surface so they they are very brittle that they they they, they crack in the absence of uh, stress external stress and in the in the presence of external stress it's going to be still worse so these are very critical um, uh, mechanic uh, the mechanical failures which uh, one should uh, consider when designing of course you know they are very critical nuclear 
industries are very critical about it. And I'm, I'm going to talk about the tubing hanger. So we saw that uh, well head, which is fixed at the mouth of the well, and underneath we have a long string of tube and tube hanger is the one which is holding the entire uh, section, which is which runs in um, meters. So, so what they do is this this um, the silver color tube is actually um, uh, is duplex stainless steel and it cannot hold that heavy stress coming from holding the entire structure. Doctor, so uh, sorry to interrupt. A little uh, louder voice because uh, I think uh, your mic may be a little away, Steve. Little louder. All right. Voice. Okay. Okay. Now it's comfortable. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Brilliant. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Okay. I will speak louder. Yeah. Um, so here um, we are seeing um, the, the, the copper plated uh, nickel alloy, nickel 725, um, which is a very expensive uh, alloy compared to duplex, but they use it because of that, uh, you know, high, st high stress and um, uh, aggressive environment to withstand that. So what happens is, uh, 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 you know, in that particular, in this um, um, uh, case, this failed within a short period of time. Actually, it is like very less than 5% of its lifetime. So when they looked at uh, the, this is the failed outer ring, which is that um, uh, copper coated uh, uh, nickel sound to five and they examined this uh, fracture surface and found that um, it showed intergranular cracking that means crack grows through the grain grain boundaries of the of the um, microstructure so uh, and then they did several uh, additional tests to find that you know it is only because of hydrogen from electroplating this uh, section of the this component and also uh, the hydrogen generated uh, from the fluids inside fluids that it was handling so this is very critical this is very expensive and what happened is as i told now they can't abandon the well and drill very next to it they have to sort this out they pull this out to understand this way they, they no longer tolerate failures like this so so that's the you know one key driving force to uh, you know pursue this research, and then to 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 come up with uh, hydrogen embrittlement resistant alloys. And here I'm showing another uh, uh, interesting graph uh, where uh, we are seeing plane strain fracture toughness, which is uh, actually you know measured in stress intensity factor in the units MPa uh, root root meter, uh, root square meter. Um, so what so what it what, what this uh, parameter means is it's the ability of the material to um, uh, resist unstable cracking. So while uh, you know once it reaches this kind of uh, uh, stress intensity, it will it will fracture uh, you know until it becomes two pieces. So um, so what is this is uh, actually the, the it defines the stress field ahead of a crack tip. So the crack the crack tip stresses are very different from uh, uniform uh, uh, stress. So that is that the, 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 the stress concentration or intensity is defined by uh, the stress field ahead of the crack tip is defined by stress intensity factor and the stress intensity factor at which the 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 the, the specimen the, the the material undergoes uh, unstable cracking is called fracture toughness. So what I'm showing here is the on the x-axis we have tensile yield strength, which is running between 800 and 2,400. Metallurgists uh, and scientists worked hard to get the the, um, the the combination of high strength and toughness, which is usually mutually exclusive. Um, so we can't achieve both at the same time, but with with hard work they got this. And in the presence of hydrogen, it just the for example in this case 600 megapascal and 200 um, uh, MPa root meter, and we got and in the presence of hydrogen, it just drops down to only like five to 25 percent of the. Um, fracture toughness in air in hydrogen it becomes very very um, un, you know the, the unstable cracking happens very early with small um, driving force so 
so what really have what we see in the fracture surface so in in a we see dimple uh, features like this uh, arising from um, wide coalescence phenomenon and in in hydrogen um, the the crack runs through uh, grain boundary and we can see that grains grain grains itself with facets and you are seeing the boundary the surface of the boundaries and this is very brittle compared to this so that means the ductile fracture will be slow and gradual but a uh, brittle fracture like this intragranular fracture will be very sudden and uh, yeah it's it's without any hint uh, in 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 anodic corrosion uh, we'll see some oxidation on the surface but with hydrogen it just keeps bubbling i will show one picture it will it will be shiny as installed but suddenly it will just go off so factors affecting uh, so we need all three components hydrogen environment uh, material properties i mean here the high strength uh, alloys are very you know the high strength it's is 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 very uh, comp is very very uh, deleterious and also uh, if we have uh, phases in the grain boundary which will which which is also detrimental it will promote grain boundary cracking intragranular cracking and mechanical stress again it's very important um, either sustained or fatigue loading and hydrogen environment it could be electrochemical based or gaseous uh, based so all other all, all of its environmental parameters play a role in uh, the uh, susceptibility of a material so what are the hydrogen sources uh, one is, uh, you know, the material will get hydrogen from manufacturing process when they are made. Uh, you know, so, uh, example, casting, welding, acid prickling for cleaning the surface, electroplating to 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 reduce corrosion to, or to prevent corrosion. So these are like one-time uh, ingress of hydrogen into the material. So this can this is also this is okay because this is there are some methods to overcome this, and in service exposure is very complicated because the hydrogen is there throughout the life of the throughout the life of the material in service. Uh, so once uh, a few examples of cathodic protection of for corrosion of the material actually if it is sometimes it will uh, hit all potential which leads to hydrogen generation in excess. And some people say, in, even in a, um, in air, we due to moisture, we'll have hydrogen into the material. But you know, it depends on you know, once it it reaches some critical concentration, it will it will also be detrimental. And uh, as it all gaseous hydrogen environment. So what it really does, uh, I think we covered this a bit. Um, atomic hydrogen occupies lattice or trap sites in the microstructure. So lattice, um, yeah, of course, you know, uh, yeah, th this is the crystal structure. And I said about the gaps in the structure through which hydrogen diffuses. Um, what is trap site? Actually, there are some regions in some microstructural features um, have high binding energy, which will hold the hydrogen, um, uh, you know, uh, better than the lattice. So, so yeah, before that, um, Hydrogen diffusivity, which is actually in centimeter square per second. Um, so, what la the diffusivity is the rate at which the hydrogen passes through the material. So, in BCC, it is very high, body centered crystal, and in HC, uh, uh, no, compared to HCP. In in case of um, hydrogen solubility, that means how much hydrogen it can hold in the um, matrix. In the in the yeah, so in HCP it is very high. I think that that uh, you know in this in HCP like zirconium, uh, titanium, some form of some forms of titanium it forms uh, hydride, so which is also very problematic. But most of the you know uh, we are today we are going to look at only BCC and uh, FCC materials like BCC steels and FCC um, nickel alloys, which is austenitic. So traps have greater binding energy than lattice sites. Uh, for example, some second phase particles which will hold more, uh, which will hold hydrogen. That means it will accumulate more hydrogen in that in the location. And we'll see that some mechanisms which will uh, tend to weaken the location because of the trap sites. And also they are sometimes beneficial. So that's the trick. Um, so 
Um, yeah, and because of this trapping phenomenon, uh, hydrogen transport doesn't follow fixed law of diffusion. So uh, yeah, so we can't use that. They, they, there are so many models, um, starting from um, uh, Oriani model. So they will they are called for trapping as well. So to understand, you know, how how, how the hydrogen transports. Um, and also the cracks, so stress gradients in the material, uh, stress rises also attract hydrogen, thereby accumulate um, lots and lots of hydrogen. That means at the crack tip, hydrogen accumulates a lot. So we are going to look at some models, uh, some uh, yeah models, uh, they actually explain the mechanism. So this is very early model, um, hydrogen enhanced decohesion. Um, so what happens is, in the presence of hydrogen, it lowers the uh, cohesive, strength, cohesive strength of the crystal, uh, sorry, atomic bonds. So what happens is it just uh, unzips and, you know, initiate a crack, which is atomic, um, you know, lattice distance sharp. So that is, uh, uh, that, that means it will have a, a very high stress intensity at this location and it just unzips all along so that is why they call it as decohesion it just separates and in case of crack as it told um, it, the, the hydrogen doesn't accumulate at the very tip of the crack but some distance ahead of the crack so they call because the hydrostatic st state of stress is maximum at that point um, that is where hydrogen you know goes and sits there because of that expansion there um, you know for more hydrogen to sit there and uh, in case of some obstacles, some second phase particles, the, when dislocations um, uh, takes the, you know, creates stress rise at there, stress concentration or stress intensity. So hydrogen goes there and again, you know, the, the, this is the um, uh, second phase atoms and uh, matrix atoms and because of the hydrogen, it just unzips, leads to a crack. So this is uh, the very early model. This is, you know, this is not uh, experimentally proved because this is this this has one has to see at the atomic scale. Only simulations are there. Um, hydrogen enhanced local plasticity, which is um, you know very recent one, but this is very comprehensive uh, um, mechanism, which um, you know tries to explain uh, several of the uh, observed uh, phenomenon in this uh, failure. So what it says is hydrogen, in the presence of hydrogen, um, dislocation density increases and velocity also increases. So what is dislocation? It's a line defect, um, which, um, uh, which is actually the basic unit of plasticity. That means it will uh, create uh, permanent strain in the lattice. So yeah, once you know there are several of this happening, and uh, that is how that is when we are seeing that yielding happens and further hardening depending on the um, you know material type. So if that then dislocation density and velocity increases, then increase, then that means it is actually the plastic more plastic plasticity is promoted in the presence of hydrogen, leading to uh, lowering of yield strength locally. So. This is like wide formation, as we saw in the case of in in air, but the size is very small because the hydrogen actually localizes. See, in the crack, in the presence of crack, we had normally have a big plastic zone because of very high stress, and uh, you know, in the material once it reaches the yield point, it, it it creates a plastic zone, and in the presence of uh, hydrogen, that zone is very small, and it inside that we uh, still create voids because you know at the intersections of line defects, uh, uh, that is dislocations. So they are actually, you know, even though they appear like a flat surface, but they have you know, at at uh, micro and nano scale, they have voids similar to what we see in um, um, you know in a so that's actually the very popular mo model to describe most of the uh, material behavior and the last uh, the last you know because there are several one but for this presentation i took the most important three um, uh, adsorption induced dislo dislo dislocation emission so this one once the hydrogen enters the surface it creates a dislocation and try and you know helps to move the dislocation which which means uh, you know we get this uh, um, you know uh, localized shearing uh, 
and at the intersection we, we you know it forms voids uh, that leads to cracking you know continue continuous cracking so this is um, adsorption induced dislocation emission as the, as the name says and it explains this herringbone fracture pattern uh, very much uh, because you know it it has it shows this um, uh, crystal, crystal crystallographic pattern um, so yeah so this is also a very important model which so most often what will happen is um, all three models will go uh, will will be you know will will, will be seen in um, most of the materials uh, one way or the other so that means the the mechanisms are very complex it's not just one mechanism so it's a combination of mechanisms are observed in a material so how to evaluate susceptibility of this um, of a material so <clears throat> depending on um, the service environment and the steel type um, they ex they they expose to different they 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 subject to different tests um, so in case of uh, there are some um, uh, low alloy um, steels where you know pipeline material they 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 run um, they they actually carry uh, hydrogen sulfide so um, for this material uh, they just uh, they take a piece of material and then um, uh, you know uh, immerse it in the uh, h2s solution without any uh, without applying any external stress so and then understand if there is uh, any crack if they, if they if the pipe is made of is if it is a seam seam pipe that means it has got a um, they, they they make this pipe using welding by um yeah so you know in that case they need to uh, you know um make a different strategy to to expose both body material and weld to to see if, if uh, you know just in the presence of h2s due to hydrogen blistering it forms crack or not it forms any blister or crack um the second one is constant load displace or load or displacement test so this is used for you know me measuring subcritical cracking and also threshold crack driving force which is um you know k1h threshold um this is the minimum uh crack tip stress field required to uh, you know um start the crack crack start the crack propagating begin the crack propagating so and also you know the, the the for accelerated testing these this one will take a lot of time and this is again they they they, they expose it to a certain amount of period depending on uh, the severity they need uh, in slow strain rate it is an accelerated test so uh, it's it's uh, uh, yeah it's very easy that's why the most in most uh, industry people uh, prefer this um, to, to get a quick at least for you know in case of in the in the screening stage that means ranking you know when they have uh, you know a lot of uh, materials in their uh, wish list then uh, they will uh, you know test it quickly and then find out which one is better than rank them and then you know go to the uh, you know next stage of uh, selection of materials so and then the most concrete uh, parameter to get is a fracture toughness test you know, I, again this is also very valuable test for life prediction stuff and fracture toughness as i told this is uh, the ability to evaluate the ability of the material to um, to do unstable cracking in the presence of hydrogen and there are several fracture parameters like k1c uh, j1c and then critical crack op crack tip opening displacement they are all very you know they are standardized and and they are, they are more or less considered as a property of the material but it's not um they are so they also subject to a lot of variability so and then the last one if 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 the if the component uh, uh, undergoes fatigue cyclic loading in the in, in hydrogen then um yeah fatigue crack growth is important i'm going to show some susceptibility measures so in different um you know uh, tests what kind of uh, information we get so most often in hydrogen embrittlement um uh, susceptibility evaluation they use notched specimens because the hydro the, the most key thing is the, uh, the hydrogen gets accumulated at the crack tip and that uh, sustains crack growth so here um, the constant load or stress test um they do they they, they do several tests each loaded to different um, stresses 
So that's what they call it as applied stress and find out how long it took to fail. So time to failure. So if you apply, yeah, as expected, if you apply certain um, low stress level um, and beyond which it is always the, the time to failure is the same. Um, yeah, that's what um, it shows. And, uh, and uh, in the slow strain rate test, here again it's not on a notched specimen um the lower the strain rate uh lower the fracture stress that means you, you need very low st stress you know it will only sustain very low stress level um so this yeah that means the strain rate imp is important um yeah the, 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 that dictates the mobility of hydrogen and stuff and then um um, yeah, constant load uh, or stress test. This is again a, or using a fracture mechanics specimen. So uh, this is actually crack velocity as a function of stress intensity factor. And this is the threshold stress. Uh, this rises up, the crack velocity rises quickly and then uh, plateaus. Um, so wh what it does is this is the, this uh, constant Crack velocity regime is was more you know typically used to evaluate the life life of a component. Since k is a similitude uh, parameter, which we can transform the the value this crack velocity measured in a small specimen, uh, uh, you know, and and if if this if this k is applied in a large component, still they can they 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 expect um, the crack velocity to be the same. That's the that's the power of uh, similitude, because the the you know. Um, most of these large components cannot be tested because test facilities will not have uh, you know ability to handle it so there it comes as a boon so they use um, yeah this uh, for life prediction and stuff uh, crack fatigue crack growth rate test again yeah this is a crack growth rate as a function of um, stress intensity factor range it's you know it's, it's a range because it's a difference between that uh, you know sinusoidal wave um, max and min uh, max and min, yeah. So this is, you know, the crack growth rate, uh, uh, the typical sigmoidal curve in A. Um, and uh, in the presence of hydrogen, it just goes several orders of magnitude. It, the crack growth rate increases throughout the, in, you know, the entire regime, uh, including threshold and in the Paris region. And also, you know, it's this is this this is expected to be more or less, um, you know, same. But I think uh, they should like that. So um, next, so those are the testing and um, uh, susceptibility measures. Moving on to st mitigation strategies. Um, here, um, actually, I referred uh, to uh, to no, I just populated uh, the mitigation strategy for steel. So this was actually done by uh, one of the review papers of uh, Harry Badesia. Um, here he says, um, you know, there are about four different uh, strategies one can follow to reduce uh, the embrittling effects. So one is coating to just, um, you know, restrict the entry of hydrogen. So that's one way. And irreversible trap, uh, that means they can have, you know, they can use uh, substitutional atom or some defects caused by nitrides to, in the matrix, so they will just absorb the hydrogen, not release. So be because the reason is hydrogen that is just freely moving in the matrix matrix is only creating um, the, the the cracking problem. So, the, but but yeah, sometimes these also become a problem. But one time, such as the welding or electroplating, where you have one time exposure to hydrogen, these things will absorb the hydrogen, and then you know it, the the material will function as you know as usual, as normal. And then there are other, um, you know, similar sort of, uh, uh, you know, the irreversible traps. Absorbers is again, they are all strong traps. They just absorb hydrogen. They never release, only at very high temperature, they release um, hydrogen. So structural tortuosity, uh, they introduce uh, uh, um, low, low diffusivity phases in um, ferritic. Ferrite, ferrite is a BCC, so it will have high diffusivity. They just, um, you know, create they this to design the alloy in such a way that they, you know, the 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 diffusion is not taking place continuously. So they create a kind of a mess um, 
sorry, uh, create a kind of a maze um, which, 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 which will not allow the diffusion, diffusion to happen as needed. So it will not allow to hydrogen to go to the crack tip and cause failure. So here I listed some challenges. Um, so as I told, some of the fracture, so for hydrogen embrittlement, fracture mechanic specimens are quite useful. But um, you know, industry looks for, for, for ranking purpose. Industry looks for simple, accelerated, and reliable mechanical test for evaluating hydrogen embrittlement of high strength alloys. So this is, uh, you know, I think a good, good challenge because, you know, people know that it is fracture mechanics specimens are useful, but still they use low strain rate test smooth specimen. And um, yeah, because of its simplicity and, you know, um, you know, not every place will not have sophisticated uh, uh, testing machines and uh, characterization machines. So, and then the second is dislocation dynamics of hydrogen. So embrittlement uh, happens because of the interaction between hydrogen and uh, uh, dislocations. So, so that's very important um, research to conduct because uh, we, we don't know really what happens actually, you know, in terms of uh, the, how hydrogen affect this crack tip stress field. Uh, development of in situ hydrogen monitor, yeah, this is one key, um, um, uh, you know, instrument which you know we can use it to measure the hydrogen in the material or the surface, whether it is below the critical, and so that we can operate. It's, so we, one can use it as a condition monitoring. So once it reaches some critical level, for example, in steel, they, you know, I, I'm not sure about this, but they just heat the material, and so when they heat heat the material to certain temperature, like 250 degrees centigrade, the hydrogen all released, and then the material will behave like a normal material unless you know there is no phase transformation stuff. So that's that's uh, you know, one area to look at for condition monitoring. Uh, spatial visualization, you know, where hydrogen goes and settles in the microstructure. That's, uh, you know, for metallurgical point of view. And alloy design, as I told, the low cost alternative for or cost effective alternative for stainless steel for or for uh, hydrogen storage. So in summary, hydrogen damage is a widespread degradation mechanism of engineering alloys in wide. We saw that it's, you know, it's seen in a wide variety of uh, industries. Um, and then um, the most, uh, the, the mechanism and the factor uh, factors affecting hydrogen embrittlement. One key important thing to remember is uh, this hydrogen embrittlement occurs when only when hydrogen uh, mobility of the hydrogen um, is very close to the mobility of dislocation. If the hydrogen is not moving with the dislocations, um, you know it's not going to create any kind of uh, problem because when dislocation moves and hits the obstruction. Uh, at high velocity in the presence of hydrogen is you know it's going to create stresses if if they are not coupled then you know they are going to be um, you know the, the the effects are minimum so therefore it is dependent on temperature and strain rate uh, that's the key to remember um, and then yeah of course fracture mechanics specimens are useful but um, you know um, yeah some new methods simple methods are always uh, you know sought after and then the th we came to the second part. I think I took some, you know, a lot of time. I think we came to the uh, second part of the uh, talk. Uh, uh, Nagar, uh, yes, sir. Uh, a little more voice, please. Slightly dis okay. uh, dislocated. I mean, yeah. Now it's comfortable. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. So thanks. Um, yeah, here I'm going to uh, go through the results uh, uh, of, uh, of um, you know, uh, quantitative fractography. This work uh, was actually part of the uh, uh, research uh, uh, we carried out at uh, uh, BPI CAM University of Manchester. So the aim of the project was to develop hydrogen resistant nickel alloys. So they are, they are nickel alloys are actually um, here I mean uh, super alloys, uh, which is actually has got um, the major elements on nickel, um, um, you know, and then uh, iron um, and uh, and also uh, niobium, aluminium, titanium. Uh, yeah, these are two just you know. So super alloys are basically precipitation hardened alloys, uh, very expensive, but they are good for uh, corrosion application where you know 
yeah corrosion is a process where you know it, it so it leads to you know, one one depending on the potential it leads to uh, rust formation or or um, or hydrogen generation so yeah here the the as i told the driving force here here was uh, because of that expensive uh, tubing hanger failure uh, which actually incur production loss and also repair costs, which you know, which no longer they can handle. So alternatives, um, 708, nickel alloy 708 is actually uh, workhorse material. For, they make um, gas turbine um, in, in engines using this material. Uh, that is, you know, an alternative because 725 have shown, you know, f it, it is failing when they made a, a box connector. So, and also, um, uh, you know, there was a new alloy composition specially made for oil and gas application where there is no grain boundary phases. So we looked at these two alloys in this project. And also we did a small you know, work on other, other, other alloy as well. And I'm going to show that as well. So, so in this segment, I'm going to, you know, um, evaluate what is the validity of slow strain rate test methodology to measure hydrogen embrittlement susceptibility because um, the cracking is main important thing so we need to use uh, fracture mechanic specimens but the industries use slow strain rate test um, so we are going to show why you know we, we should move for um, fracture mechanic specimen so first we did a couple of uh, you know um, exper slow strain rate test that's basically a simple tensile test but uh, in the pre at, a, at a very low strain rate, like 10 power minus six per second. Um, so, and then the, the, what we are going to look at is use um, uh, FRASTA, which is a quant quantitative fract uh, fractography technique to measure, to identify the crack initiation stress and uh, local fracture toughness. So as I told, um, nickel alloy 708 is a precipitation hardened um, uh, alloy actually you know it has got uh, gamma prime which is actually you know combination of nick and ni3 um, al or ni3 ti and uh, the, the the major strengthening comes from gamma double prime which is ni3 nb so niobium which which is in the matrix here i am showing the uh, 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 scanning electron microscope uh, image so they call it as over here. I, I'm calling this as overaged. Why? Because um, um, you know some of this uh, gamma du gamma double prime, um, or they, these are metastable and they transform into um, um, uh, delta phase, which which decorate the grain boundaries. Actually, a lot of these grain boundaries have got these are uh, got um, delta phase, which is actually when hydrogen goes there, it uh, promotes both, you know combination of mechanisms, uh, uh, the the decohesion as well as localized plasticity, and leads to intergranular cracking. So they are prone to hydrogen embrittlement, but you know. Yeah, still, still, you know, so it's not, it's better than sound to five. So, and uh, we have this new alloy, which is again, um, you know, uh, precipitation hardened uh, using gamma prime and gamma double prime, but no delta phase. That's the, because that is, for, they found that that's detrimental, but so they tried to design in a way that it doesn't have delta phase. So that's what they, they, they change, they reduce niobium, which, which is actually forming delta phase. Um, and then here, this alloy, this microstructure is a P cage. That means, okay, before that, okay, what is precipitation hardening? That is actually a strengthening mechanism. Um, so thereby, um, they rely on fine precipitates like gamma prime and gamma double prime. Uh, when the dislocation um, uh, or the, the moving dislocations actually causes the plasticity. So, but these precipitate stops them. And uh, so when they are stopping, that means the, the, the amount of load required to uh, cut the precipitate or just uh, form a loop, they call what and looping. So, so, by the, so that means we need to um, apply more stress, more load to get away from the, from the precipitate. So thereby it increases the uh, strength of the material. So P caged is you know, one, one particular size of the 
uh, precipitate at which um, the, the material attains its highest strength. So this is a peakaged microstructure. You can see there is a big grains and no grain, uh, grain boundary precipitates, which is, uh, yeah, they're made for oil and gas. And then the experiment I'm showing here, I'm just going to, okay. So what we did was we used this cylindrical specimen actually based on a NACE standard. Um, so that's the standard for uh, conducting um, uh, slow strain rate test. So test protocol, hydrogen pre-charging, that means you just uh, use three, three, three electrode system to, 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 to do the, to, um, to, to uh, have uh, electrochemical reaction generating hydrogen on the surface. So we apply a cathodic current density of 7.7 uh, milliamp per centimeter square. So it's a constant current density based on the surface area exposed and at a temperature of 80 degree for seven days. Since nickel alloy is a FCC uh, face, face, um, a face centered cubic material. So it will have high, sorry, low diffusivity. Uh, even after seven days, the, we have this uh, diameter of uh, 3.81 millimeters and it will reach only uh, the annular um, radii of uh, about 200 micron roughly. So it's, it, takes lo it, it, it takes longer. That's the reason why you know, they, are, they, they think that these are good material for hydrogen service, but still they are not, they are, you know, have its own problems. And then did the in-situ hydrogen charging uh, and then conduct the tensile, you know, that means while conducting the slow strain rate tensile test, simultaneously charge the, uh, um, uh, you know, sample with hydrogen. So this is the experimental uh, setup. So, so we have this uh, pull rod and uh, mount the, uh, the electrochemical chamber around the uh, 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 tensile, uh, actually that's uh, actually subsize uh, tensile, slow strain rate tensile specimen. And uh, we have the recirculation pump to, to, to provide a, uh, a deaerated uh, uh, sodium chloride solution. So yeah, this is the experimental setup. Uh, yeah, here we have three three electrode system to effect uh, hydrogen generation. And again, the the response low strain rate test SSRT response of nine four five X and seven on eight. Here we see that um, you know the for as I said the peak age uh, will have high strength. Uh, so nine four five X has got high strength compared to seven on eight, which is the red red curve. And for 945X, the, um, yeah, the, in the presence of hydrogen, it just, it failed, it fractured uh, very close to the yield point. And in case of 708, which is, you know, yeah, slightly higher ductility, you, know, you have higher elongation, but uh, yeah, at the same time, you know, it, 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 in the presence of hydrogen, it, it, um, show, it showed higher um, uh, ductility compared to 945X. So this is what we get from um, slow strain rate uh, test. And uh, the fractography, so we are, I'm going to compare how it looks in the air and uh, how it looked for 945X and 708. So in the air, it is a dimple, typical dimple fracture and um, that may, uh, ductile void coalescence mechanism. Uh, 945X, See, you know, in this case, the area, the reduction of area is huge, but here it is very, very minimum. There was no change in the uh, cross section due to necking. Um, here, also, you know, we can see that uh, flat facets, um, you know, originating from cleavage or you know, gray, gray, twin boundary cracking. And in seven and eight, it actually in the outer, as I told, yeah, sorry, uh, here the outer region alone has got a lot of hydrogen and also in, in, during the in-situ test uh, some more hydrogen is pumped in so we get this kind of a ring and in sound and eight we don't have it, uh, that kind of ring you know it's just skewed but it showed a mix of uh, you know cleavage that means transgranular and intragranular ring trans in the sense it will just cut through the grain and inter intragranular it's cracking through the grain boundary so here comes the uh, uh, quantitative fractography, uh, crack initiation. Um, so we are going to find um, uh, the crack initiation point using fracture surface topography analysis. 
uh, this is uh, the main bit of this um, uh, study. So what we did, we actually this was uh, done in um, 90s. Uh, they used surface topography to replay, re replay, or uh, reenact the fracture event. So what we did was um, take the uh, topography of the material of the fractured surface, complementing surfaces, and pull one surface, fix one, and then pull one uh, one below that, so that it's it simulate the cracked state. Sorry, not uh, no crack state, and then lift the uh, uh, you know the FS2 in this case, move it up upward in steps. Uh, so that we get, and then we see the uh, connection between them. You know, when the, surf, the the points on the surface, if it is above the fixed one, that will be marked white, and those which are below the uh, fixed surface, points that are below the fixed surface, they will be marked uh, black. So we'll get a binary image, which is called as uh, uh, fractured area projection plot. So that will give. So this is what uh, the the procedure is explained here. So this is what we use to uh, see, you know, how the crack the evolution of crack uh, occurs from the topography. So here I'm going to show uh, the video. So okay. So this is the slow strain rate test, and we have got a crack. Um, then yeah, fractured, and we use um, con uh, that these are the complementary fracture surfaces use confocal microscope, which will give the depth depth data. That's what we call topography. And these are the topographs um, of the complementing surfaces. And um, yeah, this is the separation distance. So if FS2 is uh, brought down and moved up slowly, so at the minute it is, so now partially cracked, it is moving up. So some places we see that it is coming out. So now it's fractured. So we use this in small steps and uh, uh, to get the uh, uh, crack, crack uh, evolution in multiple steps. Now in a minute we can we'll see that crack starts to initiate there, and yeah, that's the initiation point, and it starts to grow in. We tend to see that it uh, grows faster at the outer surface than in the central region. So yeah, so now now you know the, the, the crack starts to grow go around the sample where the hydrogen is uh, present in abundance. In the central region, it was only you know no no hydrogen at all, so that's the one go to go lost. So this is a uh, yes, yeah, simple animation to show that uh, how it was performed, and finally we get this uh, series of uh, fracture, uh, yeah, this one uh, fractured area projection plots. So we'll go to move next slide. So here, so we know that um, no, we we displays in uh, by, by a small uh, value, like in this case, 0 0.05 millimeters each time. Um, and by doing this, you know, this is a uniaxial test, and we know how much displacement needed to uh, fracture it from the point of uh, crack initiation. So what we did was we subtracted, um, you know, uh, from the uh, stress strain curve. So this is actually, you know, converted into elongation, and then backtrack, and then uh, come down, and then see that, um, you know, where crack initiated. So the third um, fracture area projection plot corresponds to this area where crack initiated. So what it tells is uh, we have the crack initiated, uh, you know, in the elastic region of the mid of the stress strain curve. So uh, this is for 945x. This you know, is just frail in a brittle way. And for 708, we did the same uh, exercise and found that the crack initiation occurred at uh, uh, you know after uh, yielding. So that means it showed a lot of uh, plasticity before crack initiated. 
So yeah, that's the, that's that's how we differentiate and find. You know, we use that technique to um, differentiate what you know when the crack initiates, and you know it's not. So that means it's not it's you know it's not a simple tensile test where we have to expect um, uh, continuous uh, homogeneous deformation and then no cracking and uh, neck and then fail. So, but it is not that way. We have got crack. That's why people say it's fracture mechanics test. And here we did a clever experiment using a different alloy where, um, you know, we, we just, this is the gauge section of the specimen. And then we, we just um, um, masked the entire uh, uh, gauge area, except a small window, uh, which is exposed to hydrogen. And what we saw was uh, the crack grew like a crescent. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, this is very interesting, and uh, you know that means the 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 analysis we do is in fact, um, you know, uh, showing the correct uh, expected result. So, and also we backed up uh, using acoustic emission, which uh, monitors the noise created in the process of uh, cracking. So, uh, what happened was, uh, you know, this is the place where um, the crack initiation when uh, you, we found that using frusta. Um, in uh, acoustic emission, you know, they, they also detected um, crack initiation noise uh, at this point. So it, it, is, uh, it is very well validating the uh, findings of uh, frusta. And also we used, um, uh, to, you know, simultaneously we also measured, um, uh, you know, we videographed the uh, uh, test, the entire test. So, and what what happened was the crack didn't appear until the very last point at which just the, the, the load uh, fell off precipitously. So, and uh, as I told, uh, here you can see that uh, this is the shiny specimen as, uh, you know, uh, as fresh as it is. Um, yeah, and then you can see the hydrogen bubble generating on the surface, which, you know, uh, yeah, that's the case, you know. Not all hydrogen produced on the surface gets into the material. Only, only uh, a small fraction of it gets in. So, but still, that's uh, very virulent to cause the damage. Um, yes. So, and then uh, we have this uh, finite finite element simulation as uh, as well. But um, it 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 is also off by you know yeah, some factor. Um, yeah, but I think the most important one, the experimental validation, is uh, from acoustic emission, which guarantee, you know, which which very which validates the findings of Frasta. So, what are the implications? So, early cracking, crack initiation, and subcritical cracking is observed in slow strain rate test, which is not, um, you know, better way of uh, evaluating uh, the susceptibility. So, so we need to go for fracture mechanics based test and also um, fracture toughness is uh, you know we, we did some fracture toughness test um, and compared with the results from SSRT for ranking purpose and for certain heat treatments it wasn't um, you know we didn't we did we are not seeing we, we didn't see the same order of ranking so it's so that's the message uh, we need to use fracture mechanics, but I think in, you know we can also use this fr frasta technique to complement the result. Again, we use the topography to measure the uh, 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 local fracture toughness, which is again, as I told, it's the measure of uh, 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 you know driving force required for unstable cracking. So we used the um, uh, the tip op the cra crack tip opening, but yeah, we you know from uh, from some distance from the uh, behind the crack tip, in one case 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 millimeters. So, uh, yeah, that that th yeah, this thing needs to be um, the, some more research is required to find out you know how much distance at which we need to measure. But uh, yeah, mostly it is actually to have this uh, 45 degree uh, you know to 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 meet this uh, criteria. So this is the formula. K is a uh, you know square root of um, uh, Young's modulus flow stress times um, tip opening. So we selected. Uh, no, we did that um, uh, for nine four five x and seven and eight. So these are some details, and these are the cross sectional um, you know plots where you know we see that um, the crack is growing. 
uh, this this line line analysis shows that um, you know the crack opening um, with uh, when the, when this you know one surface is uh, moved with respect to the other, um, and also I I just plotted uh, the local um, fracture toughness for each uh, uh, separation distance. So when we did for the entire uh, surface area of sound uh, nine four five x and sound on eight, we get the uh, you know some kind of uh, uh, normal distribution. We'll see that in a in a minute. Uh, here for sound on eight for nine four five x, we saw a very sharp crack, and for sound on eight, we saw uh, a tortuous crack. That means we have you know a lot of uh, uh, resistance to crack growth because you know the, the the load applied will be consumed in um, the you know in 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 the interaction between the uh, surface wake the crack uh, crack wake so and then um, and then we you know to to get some uh, confirmation and we me we measured the uh, uh, crack tip opening displacement at the surface of the surface cracks on this specimen and then yeah this is the crack tip and we measured at uh, 0. 0 0.05 millimeters and 0 0.1 millimeters and we got this um, and then you know plugged in that uh, uh, value into the equation for k uh, stress in local local fracture toughness and we got um, something like this 945x is was slightly lower than uh, sound 8 but this is a one off measurement this is just single measurement we did for the entire surface area uh, using the topography um, yeah we got for 945x actually these are uh, you know blue one is for 0 0.05 millimeters behind the crack tape and 0.1 for this brown color uh, bar chart histogram so here we can see that um, you know and then for, this is for sound on eight for 945x the spread is very narrow and for sound on eight it is slightly broadened and also the in the highest value you know in, in this range it's about you know it's it's, it's actually wa wavering around um, 80 and um, you know, 120 but for 945x it's pretty low even if we consider uh, 0.1 so um, yeah, in general, what it shows is 945x uh, has got uh, the, the fracture toughness is reduced a lot compared to sound on 8. But uh, we need to remember the 945x is a special, especially made for uh, oil and gas purpose. But it, this, you know, it, the thing is they tried to fix uh, one problem by eliminating grain boundary precipitation. But uh, the failure mechanism is completely different. Um, it, it was mostly cleavage and uh, uh, twin boundary cracking. So yeah, that's the problem with hydrogen embrittlement. There, there are several combination of uh, mechanisms operate simultaneously. We need to uh, carefully uh, you know, find a, um, you know, strike a balance to get a you know, better alloy. So what this uh, tells us is, you know, of course, the SSRT shows loss of ductility, but uh, uh, there are some uh, gaps which we need to address, and faster fracture AF, um, yeah, fracture fracture surface topography analysis um, is helpful to identify. You know, to do some post mortem analysis, it's a technique. Um, you know, can reliably uh, do the um, um, uh, no, can be used to uh, get uh, do uh, fracture replay analysis with using topography. Of the fracture surfaces, and also the uh, we can get to see the local fracture toughness uh, between uh, different alloys. So that's a pretty useful thing to do. You know, we can also understand the effect of microstructure locally. Um, we can bring a correlation and understand the microstructural issues. Um, challenges. So in frost so we had done this simulation using uniaxial displacement. What if uh, the surfaces undergo torsion uh, combination of uh, bending and torsion and stuff like that? So that's uh, you know we need, yeah we need to develop uh, that's a scope for developing a methodology to to do that. Yeah, you know how to implement frost for those kind of situations. Um, secondly. Um, we can you know as I showed uh, the the 
uh, crack fronds are very easily obtained uh, from the fracture area projection plot. Can we use that to uh, find, you know, we found local fracture toughness. Can we use that crack front and use finite element analysis to get the, uh, to determine global fracture parameters like K1C, J1C, CTOD, critical CTOD. So that's another challenge, um, you know, for someone to, someone interested. I think I took a lot of time, I think. Uh, so acknowledgements. Um, so yeah, I want to thank um, the, the University of Manchester for the facilities, BPI camp for funding, and also my uh, uh, colleagues for technical discussion. And also uh, special thanks to uh, um, yeah, the organizing committee, uh, all professors, uh, yeah, particularly yeah, Professor uh, Ramesh sir. So yeah, I thank uh, very much uh, uh, for giving this opportunity to present uh, my, uh, yeah, uh, my uh, yeah, understanding. Thank you, sirs. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, raise your questions. Thanks. Thank, uh, uh, thank you for the very nice presentation, Dr. Dinagaran, sir. Thank you very much for your valuable inputs and many uh, things, uh, you know, uh, were clarified uh, related to this uh, failure uh, form. And there are a few questions uh, from participants. Uh, I wanted to uh, represent the same on behalf of them. Uh, yeah. The first one is uh, um, the slow strain rate testing done to measure the yeah. hydrogen embrittlement. Will it be a costly test? Um, no, actually, it is uh, you know relatively it is cheaper compared to uh, um, fractured fracture mechanics test because of the specimen preparation uh, we need to have a notch and also um, you know we need a specialized uh, uh, testing machine to do that and also accessories. So slow strain rate is a relatively uh, economical and also easy to do test. Okay. Uh, nice, sir. Uh, the, there is one more question. What is the difference between two nickel alloys you referred, uh, sir, in your presentation? What is the difference here? They're asking you, nickel alloy. Okay, that's a good question. Um, yeah, so as I told, uh, 708 is, uh, you know, it's a workhorse material. That means uh, they, they, you know, they use that uh, since its discovery in several industries so that's uh, you know both are precipitation hardened material uh, sauronate is a workhorse material built for aerospace but they modified it for oil and gas slightly but still it is having problems uh, they are not you know they are they're they are doing okay but you know they wanted to go for higher strength as well as good uh, resistance which uh, they were not able to achieve so they went for a new material to and, and uh, avoid all the complications um, all the failure lessons but still uh, 945x is was not doing its best so the difference is they reduced uh, the chemistry so they reduced the niobium content in 945x uh, to get to 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 not to have uh, grain boundary precipitation. That is the delta phase, which is uh, not good for hydrogen embrittlement. Okay, okay. nice, sir. I, and uh, last one uh, from my side. Uh, there are uh, other questions from YouTube uh, live uh, stream. It seems. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, I will uh, represent the other one. Yes, so, uh, sir. What is uh, intergranular failure and? Uh, and in what way, you know, um, what is the possibility for hydrogen embrittlement situation? Will it be integral? Yes. Okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, yes, as I told, um, yeah, intergranular um, uh, is actually when when we have um, uh, deleterious phases at the grain boundary. Naturally, the grain boundary is full of, you know, it, it will occupy a lot of hydrogen. And in the presence of uh, these, uh, you know, trapping phases, so it will elevate the hydrogen concentration of the grain boundary, which results in intergranular fracture. Okay. But there are uh, certain situations like in 945X, um, the grain boundary is clean and nice. Uh, but uh, uh, other features are actually uh, weaker than uh, grain boundaries. So we see cleavage or twin boundary cracking. So both are seen. That's what uh, my answer is both. Oh, okay. Sir. Depending okay. on the alloy. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Dr. Sandamari, sir, uh, do you want to uh, represent any questions related, I mean, uh, from uh, other live stream session? No? Sir? Sir, sir. Sir, I mean, sir, I think uh, some other questions are also available in the chat box. Oh, yes, sir. Dr. Sandamari, or uh, any other? Uh, can I read, uh, Ramesh, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then it is little uh, slow for me to open. Yeah. Here, uh, one question uh, is from Dr. Kishore Kumar. Kindly brief about microstructural analysis before and after HE for 718 and 945 XLI. Okay. So it's about. Uh, the microstructure. Yeah. So here, yeah, the overaged. So I think I'm going to go, go again. Um, so here, the sourdough eight has got uh, uh, you know, gamma prime and gamma double prime precipitates. The the major strengthening is coming from gamma double prime. They are they are of the size of an uh, nano hundreds of nanometers. Sometimes even less. Uh, if it is yeah, in overaged condition, we saw something around 80 nanometers gamma double prime on the average. Uh, and also, this has got a delta phase at the grain boundary. So this this insert here, I'm showing this. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, on the boundary they have a delta phase, which is actually deleterious. But still, this this is a softer matrix. That's the reason why you know 7 and 8 is better than 945x. And 945X is a peak aged, slightly bigger grains, and uh, they have uh, you know a large fraction of uh, you know and also long twin boundaries. So that is also one reason why we see uh, twin boundary cracking in 945X. Is that uh, the, the, does that answer? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, perhaps uh, no, Doctor Puviyarasan from PAT. Uh, particular, particular engineering college. Uh, we asked, is there any specific way to investigate hydrogen diffusion in additive manufacturing uh, additive manufacturing materials? Yes. Um, yeah. For 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 mesh. Yes, sir. Is that? The... Shall I read the question again, sir? Yeah. I think if I get it right, I, um, the 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 question was about. Um, uh, measurement of hydrogen diffusivity in additive manufactured alloys. Is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Um, so, yes, actually, um, there is a well established test method for measuring hydrogen um, diffusivity. Um, so, th yeah, there are uh, yeah, a couple of methods. One is um, hydrogen permeation test. So, where they you know um, have uh, two uh, two electrochemical cells on either side of uh, thin material of your choice. So in your case, you're going to use the additive manufact additively manufactured uh, specimen. So yeah, the, so yeah, the, the, the hydrogen permeation test can um, get you um, hydrogen diffusivity. And also the, there is another technique, uh, um, uh, thermal desorption method. So that will also, so in that case, first we need to charge the material with hydrogen and then um, heat it up to different uh, temperature, you know, yeah, the, the, the temperature range until all hydrogen comes out of the material. So you will get to see the diffusivity as well as uh, the um, um, yeah, binding energy and yeah, those kind of parameters. So you'll get the transport properties of the material. Thanks Hello, for the sir. question. Uh, yes, sir, sir, there yes. are some questions from YouTube also. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, from Chandra Segaran, sir. In chemical yep. plants, most of yep. the pipes are using PTFE lined pipe. Inside yes. coated with lined material. There are limitations. Any modification, field weld is not possible for length adjustment. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, that's uh, that's the issue. Yeah, they do they do PTFE coating. To protect the uh, material from um, corros corrosive action, but um, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, that's the kind of repair repair work if they wanted to extend the pipe. 
uh, they need to recode or something like that. But yeah, but I I don't have uh, uh, you know a deep understanding of that uh, issue. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Another, another question: To restrict the hydrogen trapping, what may be the probable coating thickness, or how to define the coating thickness to prevent the hydrogen trapping? Yeah, I think uh, that's again, uh, you know, one should understand the uh, diffusivity of the coating material. Um, yes, yeah, so we can use the hydrogen permeation uh, technique or uh, similar technique to measure uh, the uh, diffusivity of uh, the coating. And then, uh, yeah, based on which uh, one should decide uh, and also, you know, how long it has to come, what is the life expected. So, based on which uh, one can um, uh, derive the thickness required. So, yeah, here you can you can see that um, you know uh, for steel they they can go for nickel, cadmium, because these are these are going to delay the hydrogen diffusion. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Another question. Yes, sir. The Inconel 718, Inconel 718, fabricated by additive manufacturing, subjected to HE. Hydrogen improvement, subjected to hydrogen improvement. Okay. okay. So the so question the is uh, um, the, the effect of effect of hydrogen hydrogen on uh, additively manufactured 718. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think. Um, yeah, I don't have uh, idea about it, but I think uh, the understanding of uh, the, the conventionally produced sound on eight. Uh, I think we'll have all the issues that we have with sound on eight. Probably that may mitigate. Uh, but additive manufacturing, as far as I understand, they have uh, uh, the, 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 the layers from uh, the solidification layers. That, uh, you know, which is the artifact of additively manufactured. Um, that might have some issues. I think I, I'm not sure about it. Uh, but I think all the issues that we have with sound on eight, um, maybe that in additively manufactured sound on eight as well. But I'm not sure. Sir, another question. Please brief about fractography analysis of isotropic and anisotropic materials. Okay, um, right. So yeah, I, th I think uh, the you know, the, the, I think the 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 question might uh, what I'm trying to understand is the question might be trying to understand uh, uh, is it related to the fr fr frostra because nickel is a is an anisotropic uh, material and. Um, it could uh, have an effect on, um, on on the way we measure the crack opening displacement and the local fracture toughness because uh, the E value, which is the Young's modulus, which is also uh, depend you know dependent on the direction of the material. So that, that's one thing to uh, think about. You know how to incorporate anisotropy effects in. Uh, um, yeah, in the in the formulation of uh, local fracture toughness. Yes, Ramon asked, "What is frasta?" Okay, that's uh, uh, fracture surface topography analysis. That was um, you know developed uh, by a, a group in uh, um, yeah in in the U.S. So in this, in the current analysis, what we did was that we used that um, uh, methodology and uh, we advanced it by including uh, uh, the, 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 the crack, crack initiation measurement. Yes, sir. The last question is, is there, a, is there is any remedial measures for hydrogen embrittlement, like coating or aligning? Yes. So, yeah, as we are sh seeing on this slide, um, yeah, there are, you know, yeah, these are like, f yeah, for, for, for service, um, hydrogen uh, uh, generated during service could be avoided by having coatings. Uh, but for one time um, hydrogen ingress, uh, traps, uh, traps could be, you know, 
these kind of um, microstructural design could uh, help? Yes, sir, that's all the question was, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, now, thank you. Thanks, thanks for it. Kripagaran, assistant professor, to deliver, yes. deliver the vote of thanks. Good evening to all the present here. I would like to thank our honorable speaker, Dr. Dinagaran Sambat, project leader, fracture and effective metallurgist, research and development, lot of still United Kingdom for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar a very meaningful and interesting. I would like to express our deep gratitude to the SVC management. I would also thank our beloved principal, Dr. S. Ganesh Vaidinathan, sir. I would also thank our beloved HOD, Dr. H. Ramesh Babu, sir, for his guidance and, and his moral support. I would also like to thank these webinar coordinators, Dr. R. Ramesh, Dr. C. Sintamari Kannan, Mr. J. Sivaram Vandir, and myself. I would also thank to Mr. Kumar Swami, sir, for his support for YouTube live streaming for this webinar session. I also extend our sincere thanks to participants for their active participation and attention. Finally, I also thank all our department faculty members for their encouragement and support in making this webinar successful. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Benigran Sambath, very interesting and interactive session. Yes. We learned many good contents uh, belonging to many failure uh, men, Hyd hydrogen embrittlement uh, uh, theories. Yeah, very kind of you. Yeah. And we had an, uh, enjoyed uh, your session a lot. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks to hear that. And uh, uh, also, you yeah. had a very big uh, audience, and I think yeah, the questions were uh, very uh, um, uh, you know meaningful. And also, yeah, uh, yeah, something to think about. You know, some questions are uh, related to additive, man additively manufactured uh, seven and eight. I think that's the uh, emerging material. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, pretty good questions from the audience as well. And thanks uh, again to uh, to the to uh, uh, the organizing committee of uh, mechanical engineering, uh, yeah, for for this webinar invite. Thank you. Uh, uh, please uh, kindly hold on. Uh, kind uh, announcement to participants. The feedback link is posted in your chat box. I kindly request you to fill the same. The certificate of participation will be sent to you uh, within two days. Uh, this will be sent to your registered mail ID and kindly access it. Thank you all. Uh, we wait for uh, another 10 more minutes uh, to fill your form as well. We'll, we'll hold on. Dr. Dinakaran, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Sandamri, sir, shall we take any snapshot? Or... I have, no, 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 sir. We will take it from video, sir. Entire video is recorded. Yeah, okay. okay. From that, we will take it, sir. Yeah, fine. Dr. Dhanagaran, sir. Uh, yes, sir. End of you. Thanks, Lord. And uh, uh, we will uh, complete the remaining formalities. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you and very uh, kind uh, for uh, extending the time. In your end. Thanks, Lord. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, uh, stay safe. And uh, yeah, enjoy the evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your live streaming. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kumar Swami, for the uninterrupted uh, service supply. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir.
ஒரு 